Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 29th. Just a couple of days away from Halloween. First, this is from Scientific American. I'll put two different links to this too, but um, the one is from Scientific American that talks about the capuchin monkeys and they use stone tools to open the fruit. Well, also, actually, I want to talk to you about the NPR report. The, the uh, uh, Scientific American is more or less, it's not much of an article, it's just a video, but I want to include that too. But I want to get to the NPR report. That's where I actually first heard about it. I think it was on Science Friday, maybe last week. A stone tool found in the sand has always been considered the handiwork of early humans and their ancestors. But a remarkable discovery in Brazilian forest suggests that might not be so. Scientists saw a group of capuchin monkeys, and I believe I'm mispronouncing it, but whatever, making stone flakes an important type of early tool. It's not clear the monkeys knew what they were making, but nonetheless, it might prompt researchers to be more cautious when they come across ancient sites where similar tools are usually attributed to early humans. I was thinking about that, too. In college, I was required, I, I didn't choose to, but I was required as part of a general education in university to take an anthropology course, and I remember the teacher would show um, stone flake after stone flake, and I'm thinking, my gosh, are they really absolutely sure when they claim every one of these was made by human beings, and it couldn't have been just even rock, uh, one rock falling off and hitting another rock and just leaving some stone flakes. So I've always been very suspicious, and some of those supposed hand axes and stone tools, they didn't look like anything but just a rock that had had a little dent out of it to me. Now, I'm not saying in all cases. Some of them obviously were. You could see some were shaped like knife blades, some were shaped like arrowheads, some really did look like they were shaped to where they had a hand grip on one side and they had an axe blade on the other. Those, I don't think too many people could dispute those, but sometimes it looked to me like it was just a little shard of a, of a piece of rock. And if you uh, um, actually watch the video and read this article, now they're not claiming that these monkeys, these are the smartest monkeys, these capuchin are the smartest of the monkey group uh, as far as brain power, but they're not claiming that these monkeys are banging the rocks together to make these uh, flakes purposefully. What it seems like they're doing is they're just trying to knock off a little piece of the rock so they can actually lick it. And they think maybe it's some kind of mineral or something in the rock that tastes good to the monkeys or maybe a mineral they really need in their diet that um, over the years they've learned to get from rock from uh, knocking these rocks apart. But you got to figure if they do it all in one area and consistently do it where the rocks are best, and then later on it gets covered over by, say, 10 foot of earth, and then it's dug up thousands of years later, someone actually might mistake it for a tool-making site, you know. And Whereas I guess technically you could call it tools because they're using each rock and banging it together. Um, they're using the, the bare rocks themselves as tools, but they're not using the flakes off of the rocks as tools. So very interesting. If you get a chance to check the two links out that I'm going to be putting underneath, and as usual, all the links to everything will be in the description below. Um, this is from BBC News Technology Department. Tesla shows off solar roof tiles, and I'll put the picture up here too. They they look just exactly like regular ordinary roof tiles. Uh, these tiles made from glass are intended to be a more attractive way to add solar panels to homes compared with currently used solar technology. The launch took place in Universal Studios Los Angeles on what used to be the set for the television show Desperate Watt Housewives. Never watched that show, but I've heard of it. It comes with Tesla due to take over struggling energy firm Solar City. Some of the electric car makers investors have expressed concern over the takeover, suggesting it is a Tesla funded bailout of a company Mr. Musk has a vested interest in as its biggest shareholder. Well, why wouldn't you? I mean, if you have the biggest uh, vested interest in it and you think you can make it better or keep it from going under, why the heck wouldn't you? Solar City's chief executive is Mr. Musk's cousin. So. Bringing the solar tiles to the Desperate Housewives set was a way of displaying the idea's key selling point. It looks far better than solar panel, and Mr. Musk jokingly described it as a sweet roof. And yeah, it does look nice, and uh, I see no reason why with technology you can't have something look just like it's ordinary too, besides being functional. So, totally agree with it. It seems like he's got some really innovative ideas, and I could see for the next generation of energy, if others uh, don't get on the bandwagon, some of the old energy companies... Uh, we may see Tesla as one of the big players in the future, if not already. Um, next up, this is from my friend David Fudmott, and this is just a video, too. I'll just describe it, and if you wish, you can watch the video on YouTube. But this is the uh, SR-71 pilot. Um, his name is Buzz Carpenter, and he goes on a tour around the SR-71 um, at the Smithsonian National Space Museum. He goes on Air and Space Museum. He goes on a tour 
um, with a narrator around the SR-71 Blackbird, and I like the fact that him he used to be a pilot, so he can talk about a lot of the details on the plane, the hidden bumps, uh, the little bumps on the antenna that are hidden antennas, um, some of the expansion joints on the plane. I mean, the plane itself could uh, grow and shrink two or three inches on the outside. I guess the engines grew and shrank six inches. Uh, the difficulty of flying at Mach 2 or Mach 3 and having the air go into the jet engine, which jet engines are not made to operate with uh, sonic type of airspeed, so you have to actually make some modifications so the engines can function. Um, the fact that you can't even keep your hand on the uh, inside of the quartz glass uh, uh, little window in it because it's so hot even with your uh, spacesuit gloves on it'll, it'll overheat your hand and you won't be able to stand it after a while I guess the, the temperature outside of the airplane averages way more than even your uh, kitchen oven if you have your oven turned up to the hottest it can get which is what about 450 500 degrees um, the outside of this in places got up to 1200 degrees so if you get a chance check out this video and last up, this was just an article I read that didn't, didn't really have much of any narrative. It just had more or less a title. And it was uh, about, um, do you have an identical doppelganger out there? And I kind of wanted to bring that up just as something if you care to comment about it. Because for uh, many, many years, people claimed that the next town over from me claimed to see me riding around on my motorcycle. And I knew during those times it couldn't have been me. But they said, oh, yeah, it looks exactly like you. Um, same beard, same motorcycle, same leather jacket you wear, same jeans like you wear, and everything like that. And so I just kind of got used to it because I was hearing it for years and years and years. And then one time I was actually driving in my car in front of a high school in this next town over, and this person was coming straight on in the other lane towards me. And it was such a shock, it, it just was like I was almost stunned for half a second. So I only, I was so stunned by this looking at this because it was almost like looking at myself that I only got a real quick glance, but in that quick one or two second glance, um, the person was wearing sunglasses, so I couldn't see their eyes, but I mean, the hair, the beard, the motorcycle, the leather jacket, the jeans, I would have, if, if I wasn't me, I would have thought it was me. It was that identical, and other than I, you know, I never got to look at the person without the sunglasses to even know if, you know, it was that close, but I also had another incident, too. When I was in grade school, we had moved from uh, one state to another. I think we moved from Missouri to Ohio at that time. And um, we actually ran into, or no, I think it's when we moved from Kansas City to Sedalia in Missouri. And at this grade school was a kid my age that looked just like a friend of mine in the former school. But I'm not saying looked similar. I mean looked like an identical twin. Same everything. In fact, wore the same exact glasses, same body shape. And I, I was so astounded by it. I, one time when my mom was at the school, I pointed this kid out and I said, you know, mom, I, I call him by the wrong name sometime because you remember so-and-so from the old school. You remember you've known him too and you've seen him. And she's like, oh my gosh, yes, he looks identical. So um, I really feel just because of odds and chance that you have something that looks like an identical twin out there. And I'd like to hear any of your stories if you've ever encountered that, either somebody that you knew that you found someone that looks like almost an identical to them without being an identical twin, or somebody that looks exactly like you that other people have been talking to you about. So if you get a chance, leave that in the comments. I'm just kind of curious about that with my two experiences in life that were just, I mean, they were just so dramatic, they were spooky, which, which is probably a good story for Halloween anyway. So I hope everybody has a, a happy Halloween, and take care. I will catch you next week.